in a galaxy far, far away. But somehow still on your radio waves. They listen. They listen. Yeah, let's listen. It's Waterfall. Parlor pals, guess what? We're here. We're back. We've been off for a little bit. I'm your host, John Benedict, and with me, as always, my good buddy, Dakota Riley. Dakota, how are you, man? I'm doing good, you know, living the life, reading comics, watching movies. Well, I'm glad you're living the life. I'm glad you're watching movies and enjoying yourself with your domestic bliss. We'll get into this. Yeah. So here, here's the thing, Dakota, you and I both, we put, well, me a little bit more than you, we put on, on air, uh, personas when yeah. we're, when we're on the show and we do that, we kind of crank ourselves up to a hundred. You are, uh, still slightly catatonic, but that's okay. Yeah. We, we have these personas. This. Just hear me out, bro. So we're going to, uh, I'm going to broke uh, what what do the wrestlers call it? K-Fab? I don't know. You don't know about wrestlers. I don't watch wrestling at all. You son of a bitch. You got wrestling friends. No, I don't. You can't follow me on this one fucking bit. I, oh, my I God. I don't know what you're talking about. K-Fab? I don't know what that is. All right. Well, anyway, I'll put it in layman's terms. I'm going to lay it all out for you guys. So <laughs> we're, we're going to go ahead. We're going to break character for a minute, or at least I am. I'm going to break character. I want to say thank you to all the Parla pals that have uh, reached out to me to see what's going on with the show and why we had to take a break. Long story short, we won't get into details, but your boy is actually being hit with a divorce. So that's the details. I just need some time to get my head right. And now we, we are back. You know, we're back to the show. I, I couldn't take Parla parla pod away from the the listeners so we're back we're ready 100 percent parla pod shooting straight up your ass so thank you to everybody that's reached out your comments your concerns for uh my well-being is greatly appreciated so that's it we won't talk about it anymore it's just something i wanted to say i wanted to say a big thank you to everybody thank you to uh dakota for keeping the social media going in my absence. And uh yeah, let's let's talk some comics. So Dakota, you got a couple things to talk about that's yeah. happened during this time. I'll uh-huh. tell you what, I'll tell you what, man. Let's talk about the DC comics layoffs first. Yeah. So how how is this affecting you, big guy? I see uh I see a couple tears in your eyes. Your eyes are a little water. Honestly, not one bit, really. I don't oh. read much DC. The only DC that I read is deceased, honestly. But, but. I, I you, do not have a single DC item on my list. But here's the thing. You have to appreciate the fact that DC is a staple in the comic oh, yeah. book I, industry. I can, I can. This is I a can, big deal. Yeah, definitely. I definitely can appreciate the fact that one of the big two is doing this, and it's not something smaller than yeah. independent studio. Uh, yeah, no, that's, it sucks. Honestly, I know, I think it was 25% is what they let go of the yeah. whole staff. Yeah. There is a estimate of anywhere between 20 and 30%. So I think 25 is going to be, going to be fair. Yeah. Uh, but, but here's the thing. If you remember, I told you off air that, uh, DC universe, the streaming service, the online streaming service had maybe a year left. Yeah. And guess what? They laid off a bunch of those people too. Yeah. So the big rumor right now is of course, you know, AT&T, they own Warner brothers, Warner brothers owns DC. So the big uh, rumor right now is AT&T is actually, uh, losing some money. And so offering it up, they're offering up or straight to the punchline. So yeah, they're, they're 15 billion. Uh, I don't know. I didn't actually read that number. So if you did find that out, you're actually ahead of me. 
on this yeah, tidbit was, of information. They wanted like fifteen billion. Yeah, they they AT and T was asking. They ooh, you son of a bitch! You interrupting son of a bitch! You're like oh, that sorry. damn. You, you ever heard that dad joke about the interrupting cow? No. That's that's you, buddy. No. The interrupting Thanks. co-host. But that's fine. Not talking about your weight. Anyway, here's the thing. Go on, motherfucker. Oh, you motherfucker. I've Go missed on. you. I've missed that uh, baby face Spark. with the... I've got a beard, John. With the, can't uh, see half my face. With the uh, pubes just glued on to it. What about your tiny little Frenchman Ooh. mustache, huh? Because you can't grow a proper beard in. Hey, man. This is classy. Huh? What's that yeah. guy? Uh, Joshua. Uh, oh, God. He was Peter in... Schmidt. Peter Schmidt. He was in uh he was he was in uh Penny Dreadful. Josh Harnett. No. I got the Josh Harnett facial Josh hair. Josh Harnett. Yeah. I always think of smoking aces when I think or 30 days of nights what I think of when I think yeah. of Josh Harnett. Yeah. Yeah. 30 days of night. Well, you interrupted my train of thought, but yeah, here's the thing. They want to get everything on the market, so they're trying to make it as appealing as possible to potential buyers so they're they're laying off people so that they can turn around and sell it uh now at&t they really didn't do much of jack shit when they bought warner brothers in dc comics because i remember exactly when they bought it and they didn't do shit with it so yeah. that's their fucking fault for not doing anything with it uh now at&t they are responsible you know, this is uh, common knowledge to people that are behind the scenes. They are responsible for the cancellation of the Swamp Thing TV show because the guy from AT&T did not like the show and he <clears throat> wanted more uh, CW-style format for the shows that were on there. Now, of course, that guy canceled. Now, of course, the whole, you know, merger, buyout, whatever, is probably going to get canceled because they're going to sell it because they're hemorrhaging money. But that's neither here nor there. This is a big deal for the comic book industry. Uh, they're going to go a lot digital. They canceled. I read a list yesterday, and the list of books that were canceled was was pretty big. Uh, they're they're going to keep that number down low. Uh, are they completely canceled, or they're just going as no? Digital? They're completely canceled. Booted completely. Okay. Yeah, and one of them, which I'm very sad to hear, is Suicide Squad by Tom Taylor, which is the well, best the Suicide Squad's been in what years. We've been reviewing. Yeah, it's yeah. one of the best books the Suicide Squad so has had in years, and so that's booted. canceled. Yeah, booted. It's it's gone. It's done before, <clears throat> and uh, that just sucks because there's one there's a rumor of the uh, suicide squad video game coming out that possibly will be announced during the uh, dc fandom event that we've been invited to cover now uh, i just think it's in poor taste to go ahead and cancel that book when it is so good but anyway just stupid just at&t being stupid yeah yeah well, I can tell you're really emotional about this. I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I'm it doesn't not. really affect me. I know I did see Jim Lee. He was talking about it that he didn't mind that some of it was going digital, and he thought it would yeah. help some. Yeah, but, but. Jim Lee, you got to understand this, dude. And I, you know, I don't know the man that well. We did hang together on a boat on a yacht once. Uh, true, I did see where he was story. let go from one position, but they're keeping him on as a publisher. Yeah, well, my thing is this. Jim Lee is going to say at this point whatever he needs to say to keep his job because th they got rid of Dan Didio. So now yeah. you have Jim Lee, and in, in they were co-publishers. Now you have Jim Lee as basically the, the face of the company. So he's going to be a yes man. He's going to say whatever he needs to say. And the the thing is, it's... <laughs> I mean, what kind of moron thinks it's a good idea? It's like, let's make all our print copies go digital. Yeah. And let's just get rid of all of our print copies, which they're saying right now that's not the plan. But I'll tell you right now, behind closed doors, that's been the plan for a long time to go completely digital. So right now, uh, Jim Lee's just talking some bullshit so he can take those naps at his desk and get paid for it. Yeah. 
Because, I mean, when's the last yeah. time, when's the last time, like, Jim Lee has actually done something other than agree with the people over him? Yeah. No, I think <laughs> His fucking image days? Digital. Hush? Batman Hush? Yeah. A couple of covers? No, not much. Not much in the last few years. Yeah. So, anyway, okay. Okay, we, we got this out of the way. Obviously, touchy subject for you being the big DC fan that you are. So let's Marvel's still going strong. Uh, no, actually they're not. They're not going digital. Uh, yeah, the, uh, I don't know. That's neither here nor there. Everybody, but their books last maybe four to five issues and then get canceled to go to. Yeah. But at least they come out and get canceled. DC's is getting canceled before print. Yeah. Let's move on. All right. So, you know, when we were planning this show, you were saying to me, John, I want to, I want to talk about something that tickles my nuts. I don't think I said that. And I said, I said, Dakota, you have a common law who is 11 months pregnant. She's eight months pregnant. She is going to pop any second. Where are you going with this? Because this conversation never happened. And I said, I said, Dakota, the only nut tickling happened 11 months ago because, you know, babies are made in 11 months. And you know, all that. Where are you got what? What is this about? Oh, this, this conversation is conversation that this this conversation is, never happened. So I don't know where you're going. This is about your nut tickling, and you wanted oh to talk God. about the Walking Dead. What, what what are they calling this bullshit? The deluxe the, the edition, Walking Dead deluxe, the colored edition, the coloring yeah, book colored. edition. What is this called? Walking Dead Deluxe is what it's called, and they are going to release. I think it's going to be. I don't think it's going to be monthly. I think it might be bi-weekly. Right. They're going to release every issue of The Walking Dead 1 through 192, 193. I don't know, man. Yeah, fully colorized. That book got boring real quick. I don't think it got boring, but one appeal, I, I have read the whole series. I did not enjoy it enough to buy every single issue, but I did buy all of the trades. Right. And one of the things that did make it kind of unenjoyable for me was the black and white. Right. I just, I like art. I I like art. I like art. Can I tell you something real quick? So a little, little side note, you, you said you bought the trades. I went out looking for them uh, recently and I'm going to tell you why. Ollie's, you know, the, the bargain outlet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, they had, uh, it's been posted online, you know, the omnibuses, the really yeah. big ones, yeah. they had the omnibuses, uh, I'm wanting to say for like six or eight bucks a piece, it's like, not bad. like all of them. No, it's yeah. not bad considering no. they were like what fucking $50, 50 yeah. an omnibus. 65. Yeah. And, yeah. And there was like a uh, six of those. So my thing, or was there six or was there eight? I don't know. But anyway, oh, eight. I was going to buy a bunch of them up and, uh, you know, I was going to, since I don't mm-hmm. care about it. Yeah. I was, I was going to sell those bitches, but yeah. I had went to my Ollie's and they had already been, you know, picked through. Yeah. So yeah, they, they weren't there. Like I didn't I find it. one copy. Uh, but anyway, long story short, uh, yeah, it's going to be in color. You said, John, this really tickles my nuts. And I said, Dakota, we'll talk about it. So how does this make you feel, Dakota? Uh, first impression was huge money grab. Thank you. Thank you. That because that's how it makes me feel. It makes me feel first impression. like Kurtman, that son of a bitch, has been yeah. milking this shit his yeah. entire career. Big it's, money grab. It's got him where, he, where he's at. Big money grab. The show sucks. The the book sucks. Everybody liked it because it was zombies. Yeah. And, I mean, but, it's like one it, of the longest running series ever. Yeah, right. But it's just because of zombies, man. The it's story is boring. Zombies. They Superman books are all about Superman. Uh, the story basically goes over and over and repeats itself. Look, I'm not disagreeing with you. I thought first thing I said when I saw it, huge money grab. Yep. And now My he's like, thought was, well, how can I make more money I on this? Read them. <laughs> I probably am going to get them. All right. Snorty McSnorty. Allergies Sorry. acting up. Yeah, man. 
uh, it gives it, it, especially people that didn't start reading Walking Dead in the beginning. It now gives them a chance to, if they are single issue collectors, to obtain every single issue. But here's here's what I'm going to say. Here's what, here, here's what I'm going to say. This is why it's so obvious it's a huge money grab. The big appeal of The Walking Dead, and I'm just going to say it, even though I'm not a Walking Dead fan, part of the big af- appeal of The Walking Dead was it was black and white because it was supposed to be like an old-timey uh, serial comic. And I don't mean cereal like you eat. I mean like cereal like, I know what you like period. Oh, for the parlor pals, man. They might not be oh. awake yet, or they might have went to bed. But my thing is, it was supposed to be like an old-timey serial comic that came out. It was supposed to have that nostalgia feel. So now that it's going to be in color, it's it's just obviously a money grab. It's Kurtman, and he's like, I need a new wing on my house. Well, I mean, Let's I, fucking I will release say, this shit I did in think color. It was, I did think it was a money grab. But let's not forget that Kirkman also did Negan Lives last month for completely free. To Who gives a shit? It was supposed to be for free comic book day. Okay, yeah, but then it came out and it was for sale to help comic book stores make some money uh-huh. during the pandemic. Yeah, he's just trying to save face, man. It was. It was. I'm, I'm not saying. I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm just saying. Yeah, he has done a little bit of good as well with this big ass money grab we're talking about. Nah. I don't hate him for it. But I'm you know what? Him. I'm going to recommend a couple things that are better than The Walking Dead. They're shorter. But, you know, of course, our good friends, Mark Kidwell and Jay Photos, they did Rising Rebels. They also did 68, which was fucking fantastic. I Both, finished 68. It's, it, well, it's good. You should I, finish it. Well, I mean, I went out and I got every single issue. Uh, and I'm more than three quarters of the way through the whole series. I've got, cause you know, each, each series is like four issues, right? Yeah. I know read, how it I've, works. I've read like six of the eight series. Yeah. Well, my thing is both of those stories are better than the walking dead because there's actually a story there and they don't repeat themselves over and over. Yeah. They're pretty good. I really enjoyed them. They're also in color, which is a plus. Yeah. One big, well, downfall. from the get go, they didn't do it for a money grab. Well, yeah, yeah, they did it because they like 80s horror zombie drama. Well, and they did it because uh, Jay Photos, as far as the coloring, he's a hell of a colorist. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. Jay Photos is a man. Yeah. We May may have uh, some limited edition prints coming our way from Mark Kidwell and Jay Photos, by the way. Not that I'm trying to hawk those for a money grab or anything, (laughs) but I am going to, you know, just say those are coming. Uh, the first, uh, the first batch, uh, we will say this, they may or may not be limited edition. We're going to see how the first batch does if they sell. And then, uh, if, if they sell well and there's enough demand, we might do another run of them. If, uh, if we, uh, just sell the initial run or whatever, I, I think they're beautiful. I've seen the art. Uh, before we took our little hiatus, we were posting some of the stuff online, but uh, just little teasers. But yeah, so we might do one run, we might do a hundred. Who knows? But we'll we'll just see. So uh, yeah, you have any more feelings on the Walking Dead coloring book well, that we're going to talk thing, about? One thing I can already see it's going to be a huge cash grab. Obviously, everyone already knows what the key issues are going to be. Yeah. So I can already see that each key issue is going to have a hundred different covers. Oh yeah. And then flippers and scalpers are going to just tear them up as soon as they release. So I, if you plan on reading it, I'd put it on your pools. Yeah. Send me the list of the key issues. <laughs> I need that. I need that money. I need that money. Uh, Daddy's going ones, through some money issues at the moment. <laughs> number one, and I think after that's number 19 is the first one. It's Michonne. Yeah. Mm. And it's not till like 80 something. All right. Well, you know what, Dakota, I'm going to give us an award real quick. I think this was our longest intro ever. And we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. And uh, I tell you what, I tell you what, let's take a little commercial break. And when we come back, 
We'll talk some comics, but first, a word from our sponsor. I'm Bo Smith, creator of Wine Owner Earp on Sci-Fi and from IDW Publishing, and you're listening to Parlapod. Bo Smith, creator of Wine Owner Earp. You fucking outdoorsman, you. My God, living in Credo, hanging out with your dog Cobb. I know you like comic book stores. I know you got your favorite. But I'm going to tell you, Bo, if you're ever in Louisville, Kentucky at 903 Hess Lane, you need to stop by Pops Comics and Collectibles because they have your books, Bo. They have Winona Earp. They're going to have The Walking Dead in color. You might even see Dakota Riley up, up there, all canatotic in the corner. Just snoozing away with his narcolepsy. I have narcolepsy. <laughs> but uh, you know what they say, Dakota. If you're hunting for John. anything amazing, the great people, and and I'm I'm, I'm just I'm gonna stop right here because I really want to drive this point home. Pops Comics and Collectibles during our hiatus so supportive, so supportive. They're still our sponsor. They love us. We love them. Great guys, go see Shay and Heather. They'll take care of you. But you know, Dakota, as I wipe away these tears of emotion, you know what they say about pops if you're looking for comics and anything good, right? Yeah. What do they say, Dakota? <laughs> they say pops is the place. That's You're damn right. They say pops is the place. <laughs> This is Peter David. You're listening to Parlorpod.com. Ah, that was old Peter David. Wonder how that guy's doing. No Last idea. time I saw him, he was having a heart attack in a convention. Had to go to the hospital. Yeah, and did. actually, yeah, actually, it was on the Friday too. Actually, yeah, I don't, I don't know the medical diagnosis. I just know he was taken away because he thought he was having a heart attack. But he, like a champ, he was back the next day signing shit. Yeah. Would you let me ask you this? And I know we got some comics to review, but if you were taken away to the hospital, spent all night in the fucking ER, would you show up at the comic convention the next day to sign autographs? I wouldn't. I'd stay the fuck in bed. If I was contractually obligated. Yeah, but they break those contracts all the time. Yeah, for like 25 fucking grand. Yeah. Maybe he was like, like, oh shit, I just went to the ER. I got break even on this shit. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) He's like, he he, he probably told told his, uh, God, I don't know. Is he remarried again? I don't know. Probably told his third wife assistant or new wife or whatever he was probably like hey because of what happened yesterday i can't move my arm could you please just move it and help me sign these autographs so we can pay that er bill oh god john yeah no i do i do believe he was signing and he like leaned back in his chair because you know she sits behind him a little bit yeah he was like hey come here and she leaned over he's like I think I'm having a fucking heart attack. We should go to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is you actually sound just like him. Uh, but it God bless like, him. God bless Peter David. Line. You came on our show. <laughs> and, I, you know, I will always thank you for coming on our show. And, you know, people, just, here's, just here's the imagine. thing. People may have your their opinions on on some of the things you do personally. And you know it too because you talk about it on your social media. But the thing is, you know, you're a hell of a writer. You you wrote some great stuff. One of the greatest runs of the Hulk, uh, Spider Man 2099. You created fucking X Factor, all that stuff. But this isn't uh, toot your horn, blow smoke up your ass to Peter David. We were just doing a bit. It was funny. You're a great writer. Let's move on. <laughs> right? Just imagine being in line, getting ready to get your shit signed. And Peter <laughs> David leans forward and he's like, look, I know you've been in line for four <laughs> hours, but I'm having a fucking heart attack. I got to go. And you're just like, <laughs> so you're not going to sign my stuff? And then Peter's like, well, you know, Neil Adams is over there 
talking about uh, the world having tectonic plates and talking about himself in third person. Yeah. So he's like, you, signature. you can you go there. Ask, you can't afford it. Yeah. Oh, Neil Adams. That's and a great on. price for a Neil Adams print. And it's like, wait moving a minute, on. aren't you Neil Adams? You can't talk about yourself in the third person like that. <laughs> Neil Adams says I can. Neil Adams <laughs> once told me to my face, Neil Adams will be back from lunch in 15 minutes. Uh, <laughs> While he's sitting there eating a sandwich. Yeah. Neil Adams will be back in 15 minutes. Since <laughs> since I'm since, since we're back from hiatus and my filter is kind of broken at the moment, I remember the time Neil Adams uh, was at a con and I was walking up to him and the first thing I heard out of Neil Adams' voice was, Hey, con runner, bring me some water. He didn't, wasn't even saying it to me. He was just yelling at a con employee. Especially being press and knowing vendors and stuff like that. You you hear all these stories about like, oh, hey, uh, do you know anybody that wants to work this Saturday? Why? Neil Adams fired his whole crew this weekend <laughs> and he needs 15 people to work his booth. Right. Why why did he fire them all? Well, he didn't fire them all. Basically, they all quit. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, but then you have uh, have uh, some people that just love them. But anyway. We, we're I think in, that's because they're super duper fans. Yeah. Yeah. I loved them too until i met him yeah I and then i was like know. we are not going to interview this guy but anyway oh, it's kooky yeah anyway let's let's talk about comics what do you want to talk about first let's do red mother red mother number seven no no red. no 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 no. What? no let's talk a tv show you want to talk a tv show sure all right let's talk umbrella academy season two uh-huh. we're both huge fans of the first umbrella academy by uh of course that is by uh gerard way of mm-hmm. that shitty band my chemical romance and uh gabriel ball and uh i say that because you know what i can i consider myself a man now i'm 42 soon to be 43 i can say whatever the fuck i want <laughs> there are never repercussions for anything you say. Just fucking say them. Tell kids to get off your lawn. All that Anyways, shit. You're, uh, you're anyway, branched away from the he's show. a shitty, shitty singer from a shitty band. But you know what? He's a fucking brilliant writer. I'm going to say that. He is brilliant. <laughs> a chemical romance has all kinds of fucking awards. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, and their songs are emo hipster bullshit well that's what they were they were like an emo band i mean i don't listen to them but i can recognize that they've got (laughs) number one songs i could recognize talent (laughs) like i don't you know i like to picture if you ever like saw them somewhere out he's like hey guys i don't know anything about music but i recognize talent i could take (laughs) you places stick with me i'll make you famous I can say that I don't listen to My Chemical Romance. Right. While also saying when I got on iTunes in 2008, their song was number one for eight fucking months. Let's be fair. iTunes wasn't that big in 2008. You were getting on LimeWire. (laughs) You were giving your computer all the STDs. What's LimeWire? Never heard of it. Oh, whatever. Was (laughs) LimeWire after you were born? No, I used LimeWire all the time. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> I, I remember like just trying 5, to get songs through my wire. I were, yes. I remember just trying to, you know, download my Bon Jovi and all of a sudden, next thing I know my computer's on fire, fucking flame shooting up to the ceiling. It's like, Whoa, what, about, what is this? What downloading something. You keep the, to it. keep the faith. Isn't worth this. Keep the faith <laughs> from Bon Jovi. Isn't worth this. Did you ever download something and then went to listen to it and it was just the instrumental? Like there was no lyrics, no words. Oh, I'm going to one-up you. You ever download something on LimeWire and it would be a a song, but then when it downloaded and you listened to it, it would be a a porn, like a girl talking porn. Sometimes a dude. Who knows? But you know what? They were like sexually describing stuff. That did happen. 
That <laughs> did happen because people would download shit on there and then the, the items wouldn't get vetted to to be what they actually were and they would have song titles and it would be like porn and viruses and, and people like oh, if a good time call this number it's the Cody Riley <laughs> anyways Umbrella Academy season 2 yeah you yeah, finished yeah, yeah. it yet? yeah oh I'm done yeah I finished it the other day here's the I thing finished it the two days after it came out I'm gonna, gonna I'm gonna say this I kinda like this season better than season one in some aspects. And, and the reason being, I think there is better music. I really enjoyed the, the soundtrack to this season. Some of the elements from the comic that they, you're a little choked up too early in the morning. Some of the elements from the comic that they skipped over or glossed over in the first season they uh-huh. clarified and introduced in this season. Like now we know, spoiler alert, Hargraves is an alien. Yeah. And of course that it was completely overlooked in the first season. Well, uh, it showed, it showed the one scene what where one he talks scene? about, where he's talking about his planet being destroyed in the first where, season. Yeah. And it shows him looking out the window and the nuke hits the ground or a, a, an explosion happens in the distance. I don't. That was the only thing we got. I don't remember that in the first season. I must have got up for a drink. No, well, I'm glad you do. Yeah. All right. But yeah, like you said, something we find out pretty early on in the comics. No. Finally, re- finally revealed. No. This is long. I'm just saying, Hogwarts is alien. Why do you sound like Rocky? Because that's what you did. You said, I do. I know what that means. Shut the hell up. Yeah. Go on. Whatever you were saying. Keep I, going I got this turtle from when I filmed Rocky. He still got the turtle. I still got it. That he motherfucker's huge. Turtle. It's not huge. It's the size it's of the It's in ball. my house. It's, a, it's not a turtle. It's a fucking tortoise now. It eats all my it's food. Like you're making fun of people with strokes. Comics. I would never. Yeah. But that's what you sounded like. No, that's what Sylvester Stallone sounds like. Well. Who did? have a stroke did he really yeah a little part of his face is paralyzed is that from a stroke i thought yeah, that was from botched like plastic that. surgery i don't know i <laughs> now i read those smut magazine articles sometimes and they tell me it was botched plastic surgery okay let's go with that okay uh but anyway umbrella academy you know number two he's got long hair like he does in the book but my thing is, this is why I don't like. They changed his powers for the show. They need to have his shitty superpower because that was the appeal of the character in the comic was he had the most useless superpower ever, which was he could breathe underwater. Yeah. And they never fought underwater, which was funny. Yeah. And the fact that they don't have that pisses me off. And so, so season two of this is based on, um, what's it called? Oh, what was that? Uh, uh, the second series of Umbrella Academy was it Texas? Was it called Texas? No, it was Dallas. Dallas, Dallas. It was called yeah, Dallas. Hotel Oblivion was number three. All right, so it's based on Dallas, and they're obviously setting up Hotel Oblivion for for number three, but there's a lot of filler. They brought back the white violin who really wouldn't have, like, wasn't involved in Dallas, especially in this way. So they completely, they they told Ellen Page, yeah, they brought her back in the show, and, you know, I don't care about anybody's sexual orientation. You are who you are, but it was obvious to me. They're like, Hey, Ellen page, you're the biggest name on our list. We need you in season two. And she was like, okay, but give my character a lesbian story arc because that's not even a thing in any of the umbrella Academy issues. Did she say that? Or you just say it? She said that. Oh, I'm just saying she said that. I don't okay. know for a fact. I'm just thinking in my head 
that they wanted her. And she said, well, okay, here's what I want to do with my character. And I'll come back for some screen time because that never happened in the comic. And of course, Ellen page did come out years later as a, as a lesbian, which is perfectly fine. Not saying about that. I'm just saying it, it just seemed like they gave Ellen page what she wanted to get her in season two. And that of course is my opinion. I don't think that should be liable <laughs> if anybody's listening. But anyway, uh, what do you think of this season, Dakota? Did you like it? Did you not like it? I liked Better it. than I one? Liked it. I liked it just one? as equally as one. I know they changed a few things in the show. that are. I know you were really upset Mary J. Blige didn't come back. Cha-cha? Yeah. Uh, no, I didn't really care about her. <laughs> uh, a few things that they changed, like for one – having Ellen page in the show, they made her the reason for the explosion and right. the nuclear war in, right. the, in the comics. It was Klaus. Oh God. I don't remember. I need to go back and read it. Klaus Klaus had done something with a communist ghost and in return, they gave him the nukes. Okay. Which actually accidentally went off and caused the war. Right. So it was Klaus's fault in the comics. I did like the introduction of the Swedes because they're not in the comics. Right. They were pretty cool, I thought. Man, the, the Swedes reminded me of the Nihilist from The Big Lebowski. You remember the Nihilist? Yeah. Boysenberry pancakes? Is that how the Nihilist sounded? I'm a trying to bit, do yeah. that bit, trying to do that impersonation. But like you said, we finally yeah. saw that Har- Hargreaves was an alien. One thing I didn't understand was the fact that Diego kept trying to stop the assassination of JFK. But when, that was a big part in Dallas, too. I understand that, yes. But the whole premise is not to change anything if possible so that it doesn't alter the future. And then he's like, I'm going to save this president that's supposed to die. But you know why he wanted to do it? And that was a running theme through series two is because he had a hero complex. Yeah, he think- thought in his head that the world would be a better place if he did it. And he thought that he could stop it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he didn't stop it. They come back at the end, they make it back and the Sparrow Academy's there. Yeah. Well, thanks for, you know, ruining the end for all the parlor pals. Hopefully you guys have oh, f- watched alert. it about fucking time to go to for the spoiler, spoiler alert. alert. Uh, Anyways, I thought it was as good as season one. If I didn't love you so much, my God. Yeah, but Thank yeah. You. Oh, my God. Uh, excuse me. Sorry, I had to sneeze. You Lord. know I'm not going to edit any of this shit. What is going on with you? I'm not <laughs> editing this shit because you know what? I'm tired. Oh, Would the parlor pa- pals deserve a show? Just go on. Dude, I had to sneeze. Forget about it. Yeah. Uh, just as good as season one. I had to sneeze. I had I'm excited snort. for season I had three. To fart. I'm narcoleptic. I'm excited for season three. Yeah. And uh, I thought it was really good. I enjoyed it. I yeah. watched it and then I went through and rewatched the whole season with her. The she whole thing it. with, uh, oh goodness, what's her name? The one that uh, says, I know a secret. Rumor. Rumor. Yeah. The whole thing with rumor. rumor, too, that was made for Dallas. That wasn't even in the comics either, was it? No, but everybody, they had to give everyone a story of while they were there. Yeah, I understand. But they, they, I don't know, man. I'm just a purist. I like my shows not to venture out too much from the source material. Yeah. And there are parts of this that I liked. There are parts I didn't. I don't know. Well, That's they've how to throw feel. out. They've got to throw it out a little bit like that to gain appeal to a, a broader audience yeah i agree so anyways i give it two thumbs up i enjoyed it go watch it all right robert sheen's pretty funny klaus yeah i like klaus you ever seen misfits no is he in that yeah he's one of the main characters for the first two seasons so is he british <laughs> yeah yeah all yeah, right he's british well we're gonna take a break for you to blow your fucking nose and then we're gonna come back and remember we're professional and continue this fucking show, Dakota. So yeah, how about ahead. a word from our sponsor? Another sponsor. Sponsor. 
Something from nothing. Every creative mind starts with nothing. A blank page, an empty canvas, a lonely room. Imagination is as close to magic as we have in this world. That spark of creativity. That moment of conception into reality. Where the worlds of make-believe and real life collide. It's in that instant that universes are born. Where worlds are created where characters draw their first breath of life. Ideas that will change the world come from nothing. Something from nothing. At Geeks Worldwide, we are creating something from nothing. We want every geek, dork, nerd, dweeb, and outsider to unite with us. With over 10 years of pop culture leadership on the web, we have brought you the latest in culture and entertainment, and now we need your help. Our Insiders program is a radical new idea, where the life of the website is in your hands. For every Insider membership, we draw closer to providing you the geek experience that you deserve. Discounts on the items you love. Content that you cannot find anywhere else. This is creating a community of like-minded souls to rally together. This is creating something from nothing. Geeks Worldwide. The GWW.com the gww.com the gww.com the home of geeks everywhere all right of course that was our friends over at the gww geeks worldwide Happy to be affiliated with them. Just want to say we are one of the fine quality shows on the GWW. So give them, uh, give those other shows a listen. Go to their website for all your geek and comic book news. And uh, they're fantastic. So anyway, Dakota, let's talk some comics real quick. Maybe not yeah. real quick, but let's talk some comics. Yeah. Yeah. All Let's right. Red so Mother number seven. Red Mother number seven. One of my favorite books, man. Jeremy Hahn. Jeremy Hahn. Ooh, I love him. Let's see if Jeremy Hahn's available. Hey, this is Jeremy Hahn, creator of The Red Mother. You're listening to Parlapod. Oh, thanks, Jeremy Hahn. Thanks for calling in, buddy. You're embarrassing. Well, I thought I am. But you know what? God, I love that man. Love his beard. Anyways. Love his writing. Issue number seven. I love his scent. I miss his scent. What'd you think about it, John? I really liked it. There wasn't a lot of action this time around, but but the uh, the Herald, I think, is reforming, which is what I guessed. Wasn't that at the end? The Herald was kind of reforming? Sort of, yeah. Sort of, kind of. She's starting mm-hmm. to see things in red again. This is more of a character driven story uh you found out end of last issue basically all of her co-workers are uh supporters of the red mother yeah yeah they're the followers Oof. although they all have that wrist tattoo love this book but the one guy the owner what's his name yeah i is don't it, know is it vaughn vaughn maybe pierre something like that he he um, doesn't have a wrist tattoo, at least not that it's shown, because he's always got his sleeves rolled up to where his arms are out. You know I'm going to call it. He's got a back tattoo. It's all over his back. You think so? It's like a giant symbol since he's like the a big head. giant back portrait. Yeah, of the red Maybe. mother's face. <clears throat> but we we found out basically that her her coworkers are also watching her. Right. You know. Let me let me ask you this: Do you find it weird she has a new love interest? Because didn't her long-term boyfriend just die and she already has a new love interest? What is the time progression here? Like maybe, I think it, I think at this month at this well maybe a year in the first yeah it had been a while because before they decided to bury him so she's only been in the other country in England for almost a month now right but I think her boyfriend had been dead a year before so it's okay been a year and a month so maybe. we think it's been over a year. Yeah, since the actual disappearance. It so. just seems like that was a traumatic event for her to move on so quick. Who am yeah. I to judge? But he was murdered right in front of her by well, a demonic entity. 
Yeah, but she knows. Well, we don't know that. But we don't know yet. We don't know that. Anyways. Wake up. Oh, I thought you were going to say something. Fucking narcoleptic asshole. I didn't fall asleep. I was looking at you to talk. (laughs) Uh, She's got a new love interest, like you said. Yeah. Who I don't think is in the cult because it had shown. What if? What if? He's actually the leader. He is actually the leader. Yeah. I was just thinking that. And he's got the big back piece. And he's got to get close to her. After it shows the one guy has the wrist tattoo. It there's a few panels where like at the end where they're drinking tea, it shows distinct images of his forearms that they're blank. So what if he has the giant back mural tattoo? Maybe. Maybe. Or maybe he's just a nice guy. Maybe he's just a nice guy. <laughs> but you know what they say, Dakota. Unfortunately, nice guys finish last, especially in horror comics. Yeah. But she's she's over there now. She's still working for the company. She's starting making to see puzzles, making again. puzzle art. Yeah, puzzle art, which apparently is a multi-billion dollar. It's it's a new area. wave thing. So it's like the the one guy he does art and he has exhibits and he wants to do his new exhibit based on puzzles and like yeah. different stuff. And she's having a hard time trying to figure out how to do this, this one, one puzzle. Yeah, and that's basically the whole book. But you know what? As boring as I made it sound, it's actually really super fucking interesting. Yeah, it, as boring as it, you know, we make it sound. When I finished, I was like, "Damn, it's already over." Yeah, like, and like I, I do that every issue. time. I do that every time, and so I'm, I know I'm Jeremy still really enjoying it. Yeah, and I know Jeremy. He told us that uh, he couldn't say anything, but I know uh, who. Who is that? Is it Boom Studios, Red Mother? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I know they have that sweetheart deal with uh, Netflix to where they get the first look. Uh, Netflix yeah. gets the first look. And I just, I tell you what, if they stay to the source material and Netflix makes this into the show like I think they're going to, man, this show is going to be fucking rad as hell. Yeah, it'd be good. it's adult source material. Everything's fantastic. Go check out Jeremy Hahn's Patreon, too. I'm just saying. <laughs> My plans were I was actually going to do that myself, but then, uh, you know, those certain things we talked about at the beginning of the show happened. So, uh, yeah. But anyway, check out his uh, his Patreon and throw him a couple bones and look at it, his exclusive uh, art and stories that you can get through that. And then... Uh, even if you don't do that, go out and get Red Mother. Buy all the issues, all the covers. Get the trade when it comes out. I'm just saying, it's fucking worth it. It's it, like that and uh, the plot are my two most favorite things right now. Mm. And I'm I'm almost saying, oh, I don't want to pit one against each other. But at the moment... I might like the story progression a little bit better in Red Mother. Yeah. 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 Meh. Anyways, two thumbs up for me. I really enjoyed it. I think John enjoyed it too. Yeah, I did. I super I enjoyed you, it. I, I say enjoyed it. Yeah. I loved it. Man. I'll tell you what, let's let's take another break. We're gonna come back and uh we'll talk another book. We got one more book to talk about and we'll We'll do that. So, all right. See you on the other side. Kevin Conroy, the voice of Batman. There you go. (laughs) Oh, Kevin Conroy. He's happy we're back. He's been on the show. Yeah. He's been on the show twice. I sat next to Kevin Conroy. Yeah, you did. Took a picture with him. This bumped you or something, didn't he? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I remember that day. You make Kevin Connor. Yeah, I was severely sunburnt. We also <laughs> had, uh, oh, oh, God, I always forget his name. He remembers me. William Friedle. Well, him too. Will Friedle. Um, Hold on. All right. Momentary, pol- ugh, momentary silence for Google. 
I just got too much on my mind. Troy Baker. Okay, so voice actor Troy Baker always knows me when he sees me, and he's voiced countless video game characters. So that's where I was getting at. We also uh, talked to him that day, and he's like, hey, I remember you. I was like, I remember you too, Troy Baker. And I didn't have to Google it then. That time. Yeah, that time. Didn't have to do it. But anyway, I want to talk a book by Tom Taylor. And I know we talked about the huge sin of them canceling fucking Suicide Squad. Best it's ever been in years. And, of course, he writes that. But he has another book that just came out by Boom Studios called Seven Secrets. And do you have your notes in front of you? Who was the artist on this? Do you have your notes? Daniel D. Nucle- Niculio. Okay, Coolio. All right, so Coolio no, did the art. Coolio. Oh, it's not Coolio. Okay, who is it? Niculio. N-I-C-U-O-L-O. Okay. Let's just say Daniel D. Daniel D. All right, Daniel yeah. D. Coolio. Did I say that right? Yeah. All right, so anyway, the art at first I didn't like. Kind of cartoony. Didn't really fit the story for me at first. But I'm going to give a compliment. It grew on me. So, you know, sometimes if something doesn't really fit the story, it takes more than one issue for it to grow on me. But but this, it you know, by the end of the issue, I was feeling it. So it's perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with it. Is it my favorite art? No, but I love this story. I think the story is good. It's a, we don't know what the seven secrets are, but there is an order of people and their tasks with guarding these secrets. And there is, what do they call them? There's always two for each secret. What do they call it? Guardians. (laughs) There's like, not guardians, like an attacker. And like a protector or something. I don't know. I don't know. That's, like that, yeah. that's ir- irrelevant. So there's always two for each secret. They're not supposed to have any relations and, uh, you know, sexual relations. And uh, the the two ended up, uh, well, they ended, ended up procreating. And they gave birth to uh, a child that they could not take care of and that was raised in the organization they were actually given away out of the situation they could leave the organization and raise the child but they could never tell and they didn't want to give up their duty so they stayed but then at the end of the book kind of find out that there was some stuff that was never really told about the organization and even though they could not love their son they did love their son and i don't know this is kind of like a james bond mixed with uh you remember the ring (laughs) kind of mixed with the ring uh not the The ring ring. not the ring that's a horror movie yeah not that one uh is it the skulls what's the one that had the kid from dawson's creek and it was the skulls society yeah, and it was like a secret society, kind of mixed with yeah. that. But I just want to know if we'll ever find out what the seven secrets actually are. To be honest, man, when we I first started reading this, it just did not appeal to me at all. Okay. Is that where you towards, ended it? Is that where towards, you ended it? What do you mean? Is that where you ended the book? Were you, no, were you done with book. it and you're like, no, no, no. I meant when you ended the book, did you feel the same way? Were you like... So and, when I started reading it, I was like, this is kind of silly. And then in the middle, I was like, oh, well, it's kind of picking up. Yeah, it picked at up. At the very end, I went, nope, not even going to read issue number two. What? I am intrigued to know what the secrets are, Yeah, but not enough to keep up with a storyline of something that did not draw me in. Yeah. See, not I'm just mention, the opposite. It, not it to mention up. they look the exact same after 15 years, other than one has gray hair now, right. but the chick looks exactly the same. Well, one, just to be honest, that could be a product of the art. Two, it could also be storyline related. We don't know. Yeah. So, and see, the logo I was looks like the Borderlands logo. Yeah. See, I was just, I was the opposite. 
at the beginning, I was like, uh, this is not interesting. Tom Taylor, he's a great writer. This isn't drawing me in. And then towards the middle, I was like, hmm, it's kind of lukewarm. Getting, getting drawn in a little bit. Then by the end, I was like, ooh, I'm going to read the next issue. So I was just the opposite. There was one thing with the art I did really appreciate. What's that? And that is as as a firearm enthusiast. Oh, my God. I just, well, look, I, I don't enjoy when people just make these big, bulky, funky looking firearms. Right. And the firearms. Like cable? Comic, <laughs> yeah. The ones that this comic are drawn very well. Hey, it's right what we found here. Cable. So, Domino. like that. <laughs> Happy birthday, Dakota. You remember that time we got Rob Liefeld to call you on your birthday? Yeah. Yeah. Was that the or best funny, day of your life? Because he just kept talking about himself. He hardly <laughs> mentioned my birthday. <laughs> was that the best day of your life? <laughs> it was pretty good. I created like, all these up, characters, Dakota. Dakota. Rob Liefeld, Happy birthday. Of Deadpool, Domino, Cable, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. I heard your birthday. Me, myself, I'm doing great. I'm my doing sons. Good. They also had birthdays. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he said 500 words and he only said happy birthday once. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, <laughs> we got him to call him. you and tell you happy birthday. Yeah, it was great. I enjoyed yeah. it. My sons also had birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, Rob yeah. Liefeld. <sighs> but like I said, the book for me, I don't know. It wasn't. It wasn't anything that blew me out of the water in the first right. issue. Didn't tickle your fancy, huh? If you it, you're going to keep reading it, I would assume, right? Yeah, I'm gonna keep. So reading it. if you keep reading it and you say it's still good, I might check out later in the future just to. Uh, Here's the thing, and I'll I'll stand by this. Tom Taylor is one of the, even though he's just now getting some big profile works from from the big companies. Um, he is one of the best writers out there right now. Yeah. So I, I really think it's going to pick up. And I think, especially from the first issue, I think it's going to be an action packed book. I really do. We'll see. Well, you'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh, your, your energy level is unmatched to go to, <laughs> I didn't enjoy the book. I don't know what you want from me. Yeah. I'm not going to talk about what I think about it. Well, that's a good thing. That's it. a good thing about comics. People can like one thing. Other people can like other things. Other people can just fall asleep in the corner. Yeah. For instance, <laughs> the Sandman Chronicles are somehow still going on. Oh, but they are canceling uh, the John Constantine book that's in that. That's one of the books that got canceled that DC dropped. Crazy. So. Yeah. All right, Dakota. I tell you what, man. Let's uh ooh, let's see. Who should we have take us for our last break? Hmm. Man, I wish I had Jerry O'Connell's voice on here. Maybe Rebecca Romaine. They've been let's on do the Jason show. Muse. You wanna do Jason Muse? Yeah, hit him with the Jason Muse. All right. Of Jay and Silent Bob fame. All right, so I'll tell you what. Let's take a little break. We'll come back. We'll wrap it up. And uh, I feel this is going to be an extra long episode of Parlor Pod, but the Parlor Pals, they, uh, they deserve it because of our hiatus. And, of course, our sponsors, they deserve a, a big uh, bonus-sized episode. So check out Pops Comics at 903 Hess Lane in Louisville, Kentucky, or find them online at popscomics502.com. If you're hunting for anything Clerks or Jason Muse or anything like that, you know what they say, Dakota? Pops is the place. Pops is the place. Hey, what up? This is Jason Muse, and you're listening to Parlapod.com. Snooch to the Nooch. Snooch to the Nooch. Who talks like that? That's fucking baby talk. <laughs> Remember when you said that in one of his own movies? Yeah. Yeah. All right, Dakota. What'd you think about this episode? Are you glad to be back? Yeah, glad to be back. I thought we had a good time. All right. Had some good conversations. Yeah. Gonna keep on doing them. Yeah. Do you uh, have anything really heartfelt and emotional you want to tell me right now on there? Uh, I'm just glad you're back and ready to get things back in motion. Uh, okay. Thanks, buddy. 
What are you What are you looking <laughs> for from me? <laughs> Nothing. I can feel. Uh, I can feel your heart, man. I can feel the I've words aren't you. there, but the heart is, man. <laughs> I've texted you stuff. You'll be fine. Yeah, you've texted We're, me uh, stuff. We'll do things. We'll do but, stuff. It'll be fine. Whoa, We're doing comics. whoa! Not us together over <laughs> Zoom calls. We'll uh, we'll do you know pitter patter. Let's get at her. Powerpot Studios is back. We're back. Gonna kick ass and take names. Kick ass and take names. So until next time, this is Dakota. You pointing to me? Oh, uh, this is your favorite host, Dakota. Oh, don't start that favorite shit. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to take us. This out. is your this is your host, Dakota. Joining me is my good friend John Benedict. And until next time, this is Parlapod, and you guys out there stay awesome. <laughs>